So uh, this and the next uh, two questions, a total of three questions, I'm going to do them together because um, they are kind of same type of question and each question might be um, take not that much time. So, um, so I want to make sure the video uh, it will be of a reasonable length. So this question, it says an airplane, and I like to doodle as I read the questions just to make sure that I'm understanding the information in the uh, question correctly. So I have an airplane. Sorry, I can't draw airplane that well quickly. <laughs> Starting from rest, uh, moves down the runway at a constant at constant acceleration for some amount of time. Okay, so I'll should I say it's going to be accelerating. Uh, am I given? I'm not given acceleration, but I do know the amount of time that it'll be accelerating for. And at the end of that acceleration, the airplane is taking off at, and I'm given that speed. V final is equal to 60 meters per second. Okay, and it's asking for the average acceleration of the plane. So when you get a question like this, I guess the first thing to make sure is to, to you know ask yourself this question and answer to your satisfaction. Does this look like it's a constant acceleration scenario? Uh, a lot of times it will be, but sometimes it's not, so you want to make sure. And once you convince yourself that it's uh, oh it's constant acceleration, or oh it, well it says it's constant. And even if it didn't say that, it ends up asking for average acceleration. So um, it's a, we can treat it as being constant. We are looking for that average one. So once you figure out it's a constant acceleration scenario, then, uh, then so I, I have a kind of dislike of appealing to formulas because, uh, you know, that approach is an approach that that will work. That's not work well in the uh, in the later um, parts of the semester but um, for when you're working with the kinematics it does work well enough that I can entirely tell you to not to use it <laughs> so once you figure out it's a constant acceleration then there are these kinematics equations that have been derived let me just write them down so that I have them for easy reference there's a position um, um, as a function of time it's going to have a part that depends on the acceleration it's going to have a part that depends on initial velocity and the initial position. There's also expression for velocity as a function of time. Uh, there's, so there's a part that depends on acceleration, acceleration times time. And there's a part that depends on initial speed, initial velocity. And, um, and there are some definitions that are sometimes useful, like the average speed. Uh, which, oh, I guess a definition and a formula. So there's a definition of average speed, which is the change of position divided by change of time. Now, and, and you know, this is definition that holds in any case, in all the scenarios that you can think of. There's a formula that's derived specifically for constant acceleration, um, which goes like this. It's the sum, average velocity is the sum of the initial and the final velocity divided by two. Your textbook, I think, drives that. Uh, again, this is don't. This only works for constant acceleration. So be careful when you use it and when you don't use it. Um, there's that, and I think uh, there's uh, one one more formula um, that to useful often enough that it's worth having it memorized. It's uh, sometimes called v squared formula because it's got three squares in it, <laughs> and it looks like, uh, I guess the way to express it is the final speed squared is the initial speed squared plus two times acceleration times delta x. And uh, these, treat them as vector quantities, their directions matter. So if acceleration and uh, delta x displacement are in opposite directions, then you should make sure that they have opposite signs so that this will be subtracting, not adding. So these are what someone might call kinematics formulas. And it's a, a useful crutch to lean on when you are just getting started with, uh, um, with the kinematics problem solving. So, um, so you, you know, kinematics 
formulas. So I didn't want to entirely tell you, no, you can't use it. But I do call it crutch because uh, just to re relying on a list like this, it's something that I want you to grow out of. <laughs> I want you to become mature in your problem solving approaches and techniques. Um, but this is a enough, okay enough place to get started. So let me get started here. So I have this list written down. And uh, what I'm now going to do is I'm just uh, looking back and forth between this list here that I've written down and my uh, doodle here. that. Uh, that indicates the quantities that I know and the quantity that I'm looking for. So I'm trying to find a formula that connects those. So if I'm looking at something like position, it won't quite work because it relies on me to know the position in order to find the things like acceleration and I'm not given any um, acceleration here. And the same problem goes with the V squared the formula as well. I need to know the displacement, and I don't have that, in, not in this question. And after looking around a little bit, I see this, where I see that um, initial velocity, I know that. Final velocity, you know, velocity at t equals t final, I have that. And I, this would be the change in time, I have that. So I only need acceleration, and I can take this single equation and solve for that acceleration. So I'm going to go do that. So I have. So let me write it in terms of the quantities that I'm given in the question. I'm given um, V final, that's the velocity at some later time. That's going to be equal to acceleration times the delta T plus my initial velocity is zero. So I'm going to put in zero. This is easy enough to solve for acceleration. So I'll say acceleration is equal to V final divided by delta T. Hopefully, everyone can do that in your head. And if not, you know, write it down. It, you know, there's no, um, no, nothing extra, uh, no extra credit in doing algebra in your head. So, uh, my final speed is 60 meters per second divided by 17.5 seconds. That'll give you this. And uh, Sage Math, I've illustrated this a little bit yesterday. Whenever you see me doing keystroke and it uh, returns something, I'm doing shift to enter. That's a uh, uh, running cell and selecting below. So, um, or I guess I could have done control enter. Yeah, I like to put enter better. 3.43 meters per second. 3.43 meters per second. So, yeah. Uh, let me look at the next question. It's this and the next two questions I want you to do. And uh, I'm seeing, oh, all right. Uh, I was hoping to reuse some of this, but I don't think I can because it's giving me velocity in this weird function. So, okay, it's not going to be constant acceleration. I just have to do from scratch. And this is one of the reasons I'm saying, you know, don't rely so much on uh, constant acceleration kinematics formulas because there may be questions where you can answer it that way. So here it says, it's uh, saying there's a particle moving along x-axis um, this is the velocity of a particle varies with the time according to the O oh, alright so I'll just say this particle has some velocity as a function of time and we are given that with the coefficients a plus and b divided by t uh, where yeah and Determine the acceleration and position of the particle at, uh, yeah. It's a calculus question. So you have to remember these fundamental relationships between position, velocity, and acceleration. So the way I've lectured on in the past, if you have a position as a function of time, you can get velocity through, derivative, uh, t uh, through differentiation, take uh, uh, derivative then the velocity is the time derivative position as a function of time. Um, if you want, somehow want to go the other way, you know, from knowing velocity, find the position, then you have to integrate. So the change in position is the integral of the velocity as a function of time with respect to t from some initial velocity to, wait, no, not that, initial time to final time. <laughs> because time is your integration variable. Some initial time to some final time. 
And from velocity, if you want to get to acceleration, then acceleration as a function of time is the time derivative of velocity with respect to time. It's a kind of, you um, basically copy over this relationship to over here. Uh, it, there's a kind of a mathematical analogy there. And from acceleration, if you want to get velocity, then you do the integral and you get change of velocity is equal to um, the integral of the acceleration function with respect to time from initial time to the final time. And these expressions are, they are definitions. They are always true. There are no exceptions when they are not true. Uh, whether you have constant acceleration or not, always true. Now, if you don't have constant acceleration, sometimes it might be a kind of difficult to work out the mathematics, but that doesn't make the relationship itself untrue. So with that in mind, it looks like basically what I have to do is I have to take a derivative for acceleration and take the integral here. And um, let me do that with the sage math because, um, I mean, I can do it by hand, but um, let me just demonstrate how sage math works. So I'm going to declare some variables I'll be using, a, b, um, t, and I think um, I'm going to be defining velocity slightly differently. So my um, velocity, oops, oops, uh, that's wrong. Needed the quotation to properly define those. Um, so for my velocity, let me say that's going to be a function of time, and it'll be function of t. I think that's right. Okay, good. Yeah, velocity is defined as function. Oh, actually, I shouldn't have done that. Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to be overriding that. So velocity, my velocity as a function of time will be a plus b divided by t. And when I bring up v, yeah, it's a function, and this is the form of the function. And I need the explicit form because I'm going to be taking the derivative. So if I take the derivative, and by the way, if you are not sure how to use a particular by the way, can I, um, I'm losing a lot of toolbar, no, maybe it's toggle header. Okay, I'm losing a lot of space up there. So, you know, I'm going to be using differentiation function. If you are not sure, um, so, you know, you could also Google search, you know, Sage Math differentiation. Um, it has built-in documentation, like a help on function diff or derivative. It's some functions have multiple names. And uh, this is the built-in documentation. And some of the most useful thing about the built-in documentation is it shows you examples of how to use it. So if you are new to a particular function, it can be helpful to kind of see what are some of the typical scenarios that you use, what are some of the um, you know commands you have to put in beforehand, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to say take the derivative of velocity with respect to t. That should give me acceleration. Oh, so it, and it gives me an expression. Now, uh, you can't put in minus b divided by t squared. Like, if you try to put that in, it'll error out. It'll say, oh, that's not right. Um, so you have to plug in the values. And one of the things I like about Sage Math is it actually lets you plug in those values. So I can take this expression. I hope I can just plug in numbers. There's a, something called a substitute whose syntax I'm going to use. Again, you can use internal documentation to look up how to use that. I'm going to use the version where you use the assignment symbol to indicate the values. So I'm going to say, I'm going to substitute things in here. Where So I need to put in b and t. So I'll say b is equal to 0 0.2 meters. And t is equal to, I want it at time equals 2 seconds. So, two. so yeah, there. Uh, then... Um, yeah, ignore that. This is giving me that value of that differentiation function. So minus 0 0.05 in the correct units should be the correct answer. Let's see. Let's test that. And then I can then get, um, so to get the other answer, this is one of the things I like about using Sage Math. You can just change it one number here. You can just use the same expression. I had a value at time equals two. Uh, and now I want time equals at five seconds, it says. 0 0.00, that's an 8. <laughs> Almost missed it. Minus 0 0.008. So, good. Um, I have um, acceleration. Derivatives are easier, so um, this is good. <laughs> um, 
position, it'll be a little bit harder. So let me think of this through. So I have this um, function and I need to integrate it. And there's a function called integrate and there's an internal documentation on it. Now, I wonder if I can do an integral. Okay, I can do a definite integral. So I can do a definite integral from um, a number, time equals zero, to, um, oh, wait, 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 sorry, almost did it wrong. So I start with x equals zero at time equals one. So I have to remember that. So I'm going to start with x from one to, you know, whatever these times are. And do I need to give, and I think because then the value I'll be getting is the difference of the um, value I'm getting is the difference in position. And I'm starting at position equals zero. I can, so I can just submit that difference in position as the actual final position. Yeah. So let me do it that way. So I'm going to be integrating the V function uh, with respect to T. Uh, and I'm integrating from t equals 1 to, for the first answer, 2 seconds. Good. Oh, uh, right. So that's the analy analytical expression with the b and a being kept as their uh, the symbols. But I can substitute a as 2.2. Yes, 0.2. By the way, what I'm doing right now, it's a super inefficient because I'm having to resolve integrate every time. But, um, you know, it's a, um, it's not a complicated expression. So I think uh, that little bit of inefficiency is fine. And this last function that I'm using, it's uh, doing, giving me a, a decimal approximation so that I can enter my answer as decimal approximation instead of having to... Uh, uh, yeah, and I, this number I want to change to five uh, in, instead of you know having to put in the log and, and whatever into calculator. Nine point one two three. That's a, oh, two. That's one more significant figure than necessary. But um, the system doesn't really punish you for having extra significant figures. So when I'm not paying too much attention to sig figs, I just put them all in. <laughs> well, not all in, just you know round it at some reasonable place. So, so that's this question uh, where it's a still simple kinematic scenario, but you have to use your knowledge of calculus and either do the calculus steps by hand or know how to use a, a computer algebra system like SageMath. It's, it's a computer algebra system, but they also do calculus. It's just called a computer algebra system. Okay, the last question in this set, um, it's uh, this question that I want you to do. It says, oh, I think I can reuse some of what I had because it's uh, giving me uh, the acceleration of the object. So instead of knowing the, instead of knowing the velocity, I'm given even constant acceleration, I think. Yeah, it's in unit to centimeter per second square. But I think uh, if we keep everything in centimeter and seconds, it will be fine. And they've given us um, velocity at a particular time. And it says, determine the object velocities at t equals one second and t equals six seconds. Okay. So, um, you know, there's actually a pretty easy way to do this because you have constant acceleration. So you could use one of the kinematics formulas that says uh, velocity at some time is initial velocity plus acceleration times time. You can totally use that. But uh, let me demonstrate that these expressions are universally valid by using what I had for previous question. And I'll just, uh, you know, substitute in some things. So I need to define my acceleration as a function of time. It's going to be equal to 1.2 plus 1.2. I mean, you know, constant function of time is still a function of time. <laughs> so let me integrate uh, this function of time with respect to time. And uh, time is going to be going from... So I can use actually 4 seconds as my initial time. Nothing prevents me from doing that. Uh, the time can even go backward. Like nothing says t final has to be greater than t initial. So I can go from four seconds to one second. Now it does result in some science flipping and you have to be careful. But I think when you use formalistic approach, it'll just 
work out. So when I do this integral, it gives me the difference in velocity. So I really have to add the initial velocity to get the final velocity. So I have to add my initial velocity at t equals 4 seconds. And it's still initial uh, even when I'm going backward in time. Uh, minus 3.4 centimeter per second. Yeah. Okay, so let me check that this will give me an expression. Um, that doesn't depend on time at all? Yeah, I guess that's right. Um, yeah, uh, let me just try plugging this in, make sure it works. Yeah, and uh, for time equals 6 seconds, just replace that 1 with a 6. And it should still work. Minus one centimeters per second. Yeah, I guess that's right. So the whole thing is moving to left the whole time, I think. Yeah. Long enough uh, duration of time, it'll start moving to right, but for now it's moving to left. Yeah. Okay, so that's the last question in that group of three. Um, hopefully it's all clear. And I guess, yeah, they weren't as easy questions as I claimed they were because <laughs> it took me a bit of time. <laughs> that's why I'm doing it now.